We have a calibration routine in Qbot V3 that allows us to calibrate for any variance in drive wire diameter or drive wheel diameter that you may come across with your Qbot. And it also allows for us to use different size drive wires. The standard drive wires that come with the Qbot are a good good for a mixture of free motion quilting or Qbot quilting. We also have available some thicker drive wires or larger diameter drive wires, some that we call heavy duty drive wires and then a group that we call super duty drive wires. Heavy duty drive wires are used if you do maybe 80% of your quilting with Qbot and only 20% free motion because the thicker drive wires add just a little bit of drag to the carriage. And we have super duty drive wires, which we, we recommend using if you do say 95% or greater uh, Qbot quilting. So only maybe 5% or less of your time is spent free motion quilting. And that's because the thicker drive wires really add a uh, considerable drag to the carriage. And one of the things that we like to think of when we think of Qbot is that if you are inclined to do free motion quilting, is that Qbot doesn't hold you back from doing that. But realizing that if you want some stiffer drive wires and you do mainly all Qbot quilting, we also have that option for you. Now the calibration routine is very simple to perform. Under our quilting options, if you go from the main menu of your tablet and then go to quilting options, you can see it right here. There's this little thing right there called calibration. And that's our drive wire calibration. Underneath that we also have the offset calibration. And that's used for our uh, laser precision pointer. And I will show that in another video how the, to calibrate that. Right now we're going to talk about just calibrating the, for different drive wire diameters. So what we do and how we do this calibration is we just press the calibrate button and we read the instructions. Everything in V3 is pretty straightforward and we have pop-up boxes that guide you at each step. So this first pop-up button says calibration routine requires to set two points then enter the distance between them. Make sure you measure that distance in advance. Now I've got two points on my quilt top that I have on my frame and what I've done is I've put a piece of fabric and I've stretched it pretty tight on the frame so that it doesn't shift around. And then I put some masking tape on the, the fabric uh, and put a needle hole through each, through the masking tape. So I put the needle through the, the masking tape and I measured the distance between those two points. And on my measurement, it came out to be 38 inches, 38 and 15 sixteenths of uh, an inch. So 38 inches plus 15 sixteenths. So that number I wrote down because the, I need that number uh, at the very last step. The first step though is to press start and it says move carriage to first point and press set. So I'm moving the carriage to the first point and I will, what I'll do here is I'll put my needle through that first point and I will set it here. So on the screen I press the set first point. Now it says move carriage to second point and press set. So I lift up my needle and I'm going to move down and what I recommend for the distance that you that you use for this. So for this video I've shown just a basically a width of fabric. What I recommend is to put these points as far away as possible. So if you have a 10 foot frame, move your carriage pretty much all the way to the one side and set a point and then move it slowly all the way to the other end and set a point. And then with a helper measure the distance between those two points. That will give you the best calibration. If you try to calibrate over one inch for instance, your error in your measurement means a lot if you're measuring over one inch. If you're measuring over 10 feet, you'll still have the same error in your measurement, but it's distributed over 10 feet and it gives you the most 
accurate, most precise calibration constant. I'm just about in the middle here. This isn't this isn't a perfect scenario. I'm only got a, I only have a width of fabric in over 38 inches. Now I've measured the distance pretty accurately, but it's not as nice as when you measure over a long distance. For the video, it makes it things a little bit easier for the filming. So here I am at my second point, and I am going to sink the needle. And I'll move this camera down just a little bit. I'll sink the needle through my second point, and I'll say set second point. Now it asks me, enter the measured distance between first and second points. Well, that measured distance was 38 inches, 38 and 15 sixteenths inches. So 38.9375 in decimal format. And I press done. And it pops up with my calibration factor of 1.0132. So that would be what I use for my calibration factor. Now on our website we have listed calibration factors just in case you don't want to go through all of this procedure. We've listed the calibration constants, calibration factors that you should use for each of the drive wires. So when, and it's also on the pack that you get when you get your heavy duty or super duty drive wires. We have that printed on there, the calibration constant that we have determined it should be. Now, you might have some slight variations with your frame depending on the drive wheel di diameter if there's slight variations. Now, our drive wheels are all within about a thousandth of an inch, but over 12 feet that can you know, be just a little bit of error, but we recommend the calibration. Of course, we want you to be as accurate as possible, but our calibration constants basically come from the factory and you can input those as well. So that's the calibration constant uh, in routine and how to set your calibration constant. If you have any questions, be sure to look at our Yahoo user group and follow them along. It's QBot Squad on Yahoo. And of course, check us out on Instagram and to get the most detailed week by week, day by day, as we post pictures on there and keep you informed about what we're doing here in the studio. Until then, happy quilting.